Good morning, this is Valerie Shoup reporting from Heritage Institute of Sustainability in Dallas, Texas. I hope you all are well and thank you for being here um, today. So we are on class five of 2021, a year of sustainability. Our objectives today are to continue to learn about personal sustainability and expand on the relationship between sovereignty and sustainability and learning about stepping into your power and becoming sustainable. Now, I am not sure where you are in the country or if you are um, going through a weather event wherever you are, but when you're in a weather event, I'd like you to look at what don't you have or what are the problems you're experiencing because this will help you determine what you need to step into your own power and become personally sustainable. We must remember the importance of drink, drinking enough water, eating clean, creating a gratitude journal and sharing with others, sharing a kind word each day with others and yourself and spending time outside and grounding and planning for you and your family security. Now, in Dallas, Texas, the, at the time that I'm recording this video, it just happens we're having a weather event. And I have to say that many people's um, pipes have frozen. So uh, when you think about water, it was really important that we stock up on water as we discussed, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then in gratitude, I am so grateful that I have a nice warm house, warm clothes to wear, uh, ski apparel so that I can go outside and enjoy the weather. And also that I have a generator. And in the further um, uh, sustainability classes, we'll talk about energy reliability. And sharing a kind word each day with others and yourself. So I hope you all um, realize how wonderful you are and how important it is that you're here learning about sustainability. And in regard to spending out time outside and grounding. I shoveled my driveway this morning and it was great. I enjoyed getting outside and um, uh, breathing in the fresh air. And it has given me opportunity to plan more and think about my family's security. Now, I'd like to remind you about the relationship between sovereignty and sustainability. Sustainability and sovereignty can be thought of as one and the same. When you feel empowered, you enhance your ability to be sustainable. We repeat the basic tenets of sustainability each week as you start feeling yourself and others. As you expand yourself, you can move into the tenets of sustainability. We will reintroduce the concept of M plus one today. M plus one is always about having a backup for everything you do so you never feel out of control. And as you become empowered, you become into your sovereignty. Now, I know some of this may uh, sound like a repeat from previous classes, but we need to be sure that you think about these concepts because they're very important when you're planning for your sustainability and the sustainability of your family. And we talked about the physiological needs of drinking more water for your health, ability to focus, ability to fill. And then we also talked about the sources of water you have in your home. Now, also recall that we talked about the need for backup water because now during these weather events in Texas, many people's pipes are freezing up and having planned for backup water in your house will help you get through this area, this, this time and other type of events like this. So let's talk about the kinds of water that you have. One is tap water. Tap water, also called municipal water, comes from lakes, rivers, or reservoirs. This water typically passes through a water treatment plant before being piped into homes and businesses. Then we have natural mineral water. Mineral water comes from natural sources that are microbiologically healthy. It doesn't undergo any kind of purification or treatment. The water is bottled from where it is sourced. Spring water. This kind of water comes from underground springs. Spring water emerges naturally on the earth's surface. 
Spring water is assumed, as assumed safe to drink without treatment. Various kinds of bottled wa um, water. So you might go to the store and see lots of different kinds of bottled water. Some of the water receives some kind of chemical intervention. So you have to understand that all bottled water is not created equally. So if you look at the water to see how it's processed, some is reverse osmosis, some is spring water, and other water is just simply tap water being put into bottles. Then of course there's carbon carbonated water and carbonated and mineral water. So this type of water contains high concentrations of carbon dioxide naturally or with treatment. Now last week we talked about the importance of stocking up on water in your house and we have also talked much about um, uh, the pH of things because of the importance of keeping your body alkaline. You want your body to be alkaline and you look at the alkaline scale um, but above seven it's more alkaline and below seven is more acidic. So sometimes you can actually get um, the minerals you need in your mineral water, but those uh, same uh, bottled waters may have pHs that are not as alkaline as you would like them um, to be. So that's something uh, you might wanna think about when you're, when you're choosing your bottled water. And as you can see, different types of water um, you can look at and see what all uh, minerals and so on and so forth that they say are in the water. Okay, just remember that purified and distilled water will quench your thirst and hydrate you, but mineral water provides the nutrition your body craves. And it also helps regulate the body fat as we talked about um, last week because um, uh, calcium, magnesium, sulfate, silicate contribute to metabolizing fat. And also people who have high blood pressure can regulate the blood pressure with mineral water because the magnesium and calcium help by balancing blood pressure and by impacting the electrolytic process of the body and the brain. Um, mineral water lessens the body acidity and it promotes digestion, lessens constipation and bloating. Active mineral water helps lessen inflammation from arthritis. And as you recall, mineral water helps promote healthy skin and physical alertness. So uh, you might be asking, what should I drink my water in? And you may not have even, even thought about that. So some Ayurvedic medicine specialists suggest water should be consumed from copper vessels. Now, why is that? Copper vessels have antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. So if you store your water in copper, it's naturally purified. It also balances the pH of the water. It will, be, um, it will help the water uh, be alkaline. And um, uh, by having this uh, water in copper, it aids in weight loss. It improves your digestion, it slows aging, and fights off free radicals. It helps with absorption of the iron in the body and it will help your skin look younger and more radiant and helps regulate the, the um, thyroid gland. Another choice that some people make is using an earthenware container um, because the earthenware containers provide minerals and it will also keep your water um, cold. So if your water's uh, bacteria free, you can go ahead and put it in these earthenware containers and, and uh, it will uh, stay at whatever temperature you put it in the containers for um, quite some time, okay? So um, as you recall, last week we talked about the different types of filtration of your system. Um, you wanna be sure that your water is filtered uh, before you drink it and also pay attention to the type of filtration you have because Many, many filters don't really get rid of the bacteria, viruses, and um, uh, the pharmaceuticals that exist in water. So you're saying, why do I need these minerals? So this is just a kind of a reminder of, of the importance of having, uh, getting the minerals you need. So calcium helps build strong bones, phosphorus helps 
build healthy muscle mass, magnesium aids in bone metabolism, potassium supports blood vessels, silicon supports skin cells, it's a catalyst for dental and bone health, and it supports collagen production and connective tissue. Sodium improves brain function, relieves muscle cramps, iron supports the hemoglobin, supports oxygenation of the blood and circulation, and zinc regulates enzyme functions. Copper supports blood circulation. Iodine supports breath, the breasts and prevents skin disease. Chromium helps with diabetes. Selenium supports cell reactions re and reinforces the functions of copper, zinc, and calcium. So how can I get these minerals outside of um, your water? Well, if you eat a lot of leafy vegetables and fruits such as apples, peaches, and bananas, um, they have minerals in them. Now, we will talk in another week more about um, uh, food, but just another thing I wanted to bring real quickly on food is uh, what keeps you healthy is eat, eating alkaline um, foods because when your body's alkaline, bacteria and viruses cannot live in that environment. So you can find alkaline charts online. Um, and if you see the top alkaline uh, foods, lemons, a lot of people put lemon in water and that's the reason for it to get that um, a lemon and make the water if it's not alkaline. Um, like when you go to a restaurant, you don't know what the water is. So you put lemon in it. Cucumbers is alkaline, bananas, beet greens, tofu, watermelon, kale, blueberry, apricots, green beans, avocados, almonds, cane peppers, all these things should be in your diet. Um, and one of my favorite things for brain health that I add in my diet is uh, walnuts because also I want to have healthy skin and hair. So in summary, it's important that uh, you plan for your water security and remember to have more than one source of water available to you. Um, you know, so if you have city water, when you bring it in your house, you should definitely filter it and also have some in storage, extra gallon jugs of the water, um, store it properly. If you can afford to get a copper vessel, uh, that's a good way to store some water. You'll have some in your Berkey, in your copper vessel, and in your uh, stone vessel. And remember, it's important to consider the quality of water you are consuming. Uh, it needs to be filtered and remove the chemicals and so forth. And it's important to uh, consider the water, whether it has some minerals you need to maintain health. They also have mineral drops you can put in your water if you uh, so choose. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Enjoy planning for your personal water security. And please feel free to go to my website, www.heritageios.com. You can also uh, reach, look at my YouTube channel, uh, Valerie Shoup uh, on YouTube. I have many YouTube videos out there. And uh, my email is info at heritageios.com. If you have any questions or you need help with creating a sustainability plan for your business or organization, um, I'm happy to help you with that. And um, so we also have another series of videos going right now about how to create a sustainability plan. But I believe that people need to be personally sustainable uh, in conjunction with creating a sustainability plan for your organization. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and have a great week. Thank you.